All right, we are um, calling to order here. Uh, today's Tuesday, November 28th, 7 o'clock. We're in the uh, room 21, second floor, Town Hall, Whitman Finance Committee meeting room. Uh, attendance, everyone is here with the exception of uh, Ralph and Al Cafferty, who did call in uh, unavailable. So, Ralph, I, I expect Ralph to come because he didn't say he wasn't. Meeting minutes, we'll, we'll, we'll put them off till our next meeting from November 21st. Reverse, reserve fund stands at 35000 Public forum, there's nobody here for anything that's not on the agenda. So on your uh, agenda, you'll see new business. We have budget meetings for the fire and the treasure collector. We need to amend the meeting schedule. I, I had that for last week and didn't do it, so we just make sure we get that done. And unfortunately, we have some sad news to report to committee vacancy. Uh, Lucas, his uh, studies are going to prevent him from attending our meetings regularly oh, on Tuesdays. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've definitely enjoyed my time on the committee. Um, yeah, I do, I do have a class on Tuesdays next semester for international relations, so that's going to have to take priority, but I've definitely enjoyed learning how we can make conditions better for the town of Whitman. Excellent. Well, it's with regret we accept your resignation, and hopefully after you get done with your studies, you can come on back and continue the work that you've, you've been doing for us. So, what, When is it effective? At the end of this year. At the end, so, so I'll, be, I'll be here through the end of end of December. Okay. Yep. Yep. And my my semester next next year starts on January 9th. Okay. Yep. All right, and then under old business, we have our subcommittee reports um, and the outstanding items that we carry on our agenda. Uh, communications and town administrator updates. What well, we believe we'll have the town administrator in, because of the selectmen's meeting. And then just an upcoming meeting, just a note on next week's meeting, which is 12-5. Uh, if you want to make a note there, it's a 6 p.m. start in the uh, Selectman's meeting room. So I just posted that today. You'll see the posting come out. And uh, so we'll do the joint meeting over there, come back here at 7, and we have two budget meetings uh, that won't get affected by that additional meeting with the Board of Selectmen. So, so again, keep in mind, you know, uh, open discussion. Uh, we uh, encourage anybody who has anything that they want to get out there in advance. Uh, you know, this, this is a good um, overview of the DLS report, uh, not to get too far off the agenda, but so it does really set up uh, a joint meeting of Selectman Finance Committee to review revenue projections, reach consensus on overall expenditure levels, the use of reserves and allocations of resources generally. That's what that meeting next week should be about. So we'll talk a little bit about, more about it. Oh, just a point of order. Just, um, I don't think a presentation of the MBTA Community Act is appropriate right now after the meeting I just went through. So we okay. can take that off. And um, Never had it on the agenda. So oh, we, we talked about including it. but And I think that what they're doing downstairs is in a better direction. Okay, well, we'll save that for a new business. And we have the building department scheduled for next week, but I don't have the building department budget unless I have missed it. I think it came out. From Bob really? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll tell you. Right. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. I'll check my mail before I can. All right, so um, could you just check on the emails from Mary Beth to see if that budget came through when you get a chance? For next week? So next week. Building department. Building department. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we've just gone over the agenda, and now um, we will get right into the uh, the fire department's presentation. Uh, so, Chief Tim Clancy, we're going to go around the board and uh, introduce everybody. Mike Warner. Okay. Nice to meet you. John Newell. Good Kathleen Ortega. Rosemary Connor. Lucas Moscoso, nice to meet you. Uh, Chuck Colby, We've met. and Rick Anderson, <laughs> We've met. And, and this is my administrative assistant, actually the executive Hello. assistant, hopefully soon to be Amy Desmond. Hi. Amy, welcome. Hi, Amy. Thank you for Who coming. Was, was vital to the operation. There's just too much going on. So what we presented, just on a side note, last yesterday or a couple days ago, I sent out the first prelim budget to Ricky forwarded to you. Kathleen caught it, and, and thank you. Okay. What happened is I work off the page where all the salaries are on. That's the one we've always worked off. That's how, I won't lie to you, that's how Lisa taught me how to do it. And that's the one I always work. So when it came through and numbers were off, saying that the, it appeared that expense had been added twice, I'm looking at a form that says absolutely not. 
that's the numbers. Then I go for the first two pages that were done in Excel that we were given to fill in, and it did. The cells were all slated to line up. That's my fault for not checking it, but what you have in front of you now is, is, yeah. is the correct stuff. So the first page after the title page is more or less too small for us to see, so we blew it up to the third page. Um, you can probably see it. Um, so just to go over some of this and talk briefly about it, we're in contract years, so as far as deputy and fire chief and deputy chief, we're all in negotiations working on those based upon other stuff that's taken place already. That's where we came up with those numbers. Uh, all other services, as you can see, we're looking for that $597,000 increase. It's a 16.91% increase. That includes the day position, which we all in here have heard me talk about previously, mm -hmm. to add another day position in, and that also adds the other firefighter to fill that person being promoted. I have not sat with the town administrator or the selectman to see where this is headed, so I put it in so that we can always adjust it in the future should we need to. Um, the rest of that is contractual. Off, this is the last year of the contract with Local 1769. Uh, they'll be going into negotiations next fall. So we have one more year of that. In a basis, it was a 2.5% increase, and we've we've talked about this a lot in the past, but 25 in our world is not 25 based upon it affects their salary, their overtime, their longevity, their college, their stipends. And it, 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 really, trans it, it really snowballs, for lack of a better term. So that's where we ended up. There is That is on with the extra position, like I said, and the other hiring, the other firefighter. Uh, clerical, that is based upon... Amy is not a union employee, but she follows the union schedule from the town hall, and she was it was a step raise this year, level three, level three, level three which was included in that, so you see that. The MA clerk part-time, if I start going too fast, I've been staring at this for a month and a half, so it makes <laughs> sense to me, right? Um, emergency management. Thank you. Um, Amy does the clerical for that. That went up a solid $82. Um, expense, here's a big jump. Up to two, it's from 245 to 269. And part of the reason for that is everything that I'm doing right now, as far as repairs, maintenance, expenses at the fire station, buying anything, repairing anything, has gone through the roof. And just for transparency, that's probably not enough. That's on the conservative side. Um, as far as, just for example, this past year we absorbed, and I have some ideas for it, and I'll share with you guys at the end, but this past year, it's like a snowball effect. You get one thing fixed, we find another. On an engine, I just had to do $4,000 in tires. Believe it or not, that was for four. They wanted to do six. We did four. The front ones were all right. But that, in turn, shows me that I have broken leaf springs in the primary engine, which now have to be repaired. So the leaf springs have to be taken out of the engine and put back in. How much? I don't know, but it's not going to be cheap. But it has to be done. They're still in line. It's, a, it, it's not a safety issue right now, but it will be. So stuff like that that's coming on. Uh, the other thing with expense, and it doesn't really even cover this, we have a service contract with a company called Stryker, which does our stretches, our auto load systems, our monitors, our, chat, our Lucas CPR devices, and our stair chairs. I've been able to get everything to one manufacturer. I don't know if you all remember probably wasn't as big in your life as it was in mine. We had a bunch of different vendors servicing stuff at one point, and it was just money was going everywhere. So we ended up entering into a service contract to take care of all of the ambulances and all the equipment. So the two ambulances and the ALS engine, that service contract this year was $22,581 just for the service contract. That being said, me being, they call me cheap at the fire station. I count nickels. I do. I do. But I wasn't going to do it. I'm like, I'll roll the dice, and if something breaks, we'll fix it. Well, the stretch is $47,000. The monitor is $42,000 to replace. And just when I was, had to make the decision to go forward or not, a community that touches us broke the piston on the CPI device. I'm like, whatever. It was eight grand. I'm like, all right, $22,000 for all of our equipment is not bad. But that's been a substantial increase in the expense that we just took out of the expense. There's some talk that maybe we'll put it into an article at some point, and that's for me to discuss with Mary Beth and stuff and throw it out there in the future. And we don't necessarily want to do service contracts as articles, but maybe it's time to look at that. And then the other expenses that have gone up, <clears throat> um, just the utilities alone. Um, a couple members have the opportunity to come to other fire station. We are not the most heat-efficient building in the world we're not we're not even cold yet and i think the last 
gas bill was just under 500 bucks. And it, it's not cold yet. So get ready for that. Um, as far as some other expenses, there's come to light this year. As we have an article, it falls under my expense for fire, fire alarm sprinkler maintenance throughout the town. We put 10,000 in it. It's down a little bit farther. I'm getting just a little bit ahead. Um, there's 10,000 into it. We've already overspent that. <laughs> I do that in conjunction with Todd, which does all the fire alarm panels, the sprinkler systems, and the uh, fire extinguishers in the town. That previously has been enough, but it came came to be found when Todd started investigating, they weren't being inspected enough. The stuff wasn't being reviewed enough. And we've talked a lot about, well, we've talked a lot about infrastructure. And it's like, well, get it. Get us to a schedule that we need to be at so that we're not having the frozen sprinkler pipes or, God forbid, someone has a problem and they try and use the fire extinguisher and it doesn't work. But right now, it doesn't matter because of the consolidated budget. Depends on who you talk to. We're already overspent that 10000 by $2,000. Where are you taking the money from? What, what? That's coming out of my expenses. Yeah. My expense line. We're talking about it. And, that, and I'm not being like a downer Tim or anything, but that will come back up in the f- spring. Because we're gonna, we'll end up being in a deficit more than likely. I'm, we're working at it. We work at it every week. We do the reverse budget every week, and I'm like, where are we gonna take this from? You know, I brought it up already. I've talked to Mary Beth about it, and just we can't not do it. We need to do it. But the problem is, like, I just paid some bills for some other buildings in town. It comes back to full circle to last year. We talked. Probably not this year. It's probably not going to happen. But the I'm not telling you how to do your job. But they probably needs the facilities management team taught in them. They probably need their own budget yeah. to address this. I don't mind doing it. I sign the bills. I say the warrant. She makes sure they're right. We send them in. Paula triple checks them and it gets sent off. And I don't mind doing it. But we've never had the time to invest in. Geez, the sprinkler system should be checked twice. Well, the alarms need to be checked. And the big problem, and the 2000 is going to be a drop in the bucket. We could probably absorb that. I will tell you there's been a lot of fire alarm problems at the police station. I don't know if Chief Hanlon talked about it or not. We just found out, and Todd pointed it out to me last week, when the police station was built, they put that fire alarm panel in, and that fire alarm panel, per the guy, guys that were there from, I think it's Simplex or whoever, that was almost the end of life when they put it in. So... Get ready. There's going to be fire alarm panels. There'll be a capital because there'll be enough. So that'll go before capital. But just to give you a rundown on the expenses, we're trying. Um, it just you, we all know from our own living that everything's gone up. Uh, diesel's increased. The maintenance. We still have that money we're working on for the improvements. I've showed. I showed Kathleen and Rick some of the stuff that we're working on to get done with that money. Is it going to be enough? Eh, probably not. But it'll give us a good start. You know, it, it's a starting point that we can get to. Um, I already talked about the fire sprinkler. Um, I kicked that up to fifteen thousand dollars from the ten. We're already at twelve ish now, and depending on what happens at the fire station, uh, the police station with that panel, and any other assorted problems, that can easily go fifteen twenty. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We're looking at it. We're getting different prices. The forest fire remains the same at two thousand. That's kind of in limbo. We received a grant. We wrote a grant. We received a grant for a, fire, a brand new um, forestry truck. Um, we're about 18 months out. The current one is leaking oil pretty bad. The DPW is going to try and fix it for me again. Uh, we've had. I will tell you, we've saved a lot of money on maintenance by partnering with the DPW. Um, I can't remember his name at the moment. It'll come to me. Ryan. Ryan is a is an ace mechanic. He just stands there, he figures out, he's fixing stuff for us. He can't do the fire trucks, but he can do the forest fire and the administrative vehicles and Big so forth. tall guy? No, little guy. Brilliant. Okay. His, the mind just starts working and he fixes stuff and it's very cool. So that, that'll free, that might be freed up because I'm just paying for pots, I'm not paying for labor, but we keep it just for that truck. Uh, the ambulance repair and maintenance went up. Um, part of this is we do have a newer ambulance that we just got back because we blew the motor. It was a Ford defect. They put in a new motor, it's back. A spare ambulance, we have one spare, and we have another ambulance that's out with a blown motor, which we're being recorded, but may end up illegal. Because they repaired it once, it broke again, they took it back, they repaired it again, they took it for a test drive, and they blew the motor. So in my opinion, Ford Motor Company owes us a motor. And we'll take that to where we have to. Mm-hmm. And we've also ordered another ambulance through um, COVID money, APA money. So there will be one coming, but we're not going to see that to probably 25-ish. It's when we get a chassis. 
It's all about time. Um, so we've kicked that up, and part of that is, once again, we talked about it last year, Brockton Hospital is still closed. We're going farther. We're going longer. We're beating these trucks up. They're spending more time idling, which in turn we're spending more time making repairs. And I don't have a spare right now because it's currently broken. Um, we're trying to, we've developed partnerships locally, but with the Ford stuff, it has to go to Ford. And I will tell you, dealing with a major corporation, there's not that, there's, yeah, I'm a number. <laughs> and they don't like me because I threaten, you know, they're going to meet counsel. Because they told me yesterday that, hey, uh, we haven't got to that yet. We'll get you an estimate. I'm like, there, there's, there's no estimate. <laughs> no, there is no estimate. Ford Motor Company owed me two motors. You made good on one. Now I need another. That being said, if once we get through this whole process with Ford, the other one comes in. I think it, it makes sense for the community to keep the two spares. Keep two spare ambulances because we were break, we're going farther. They're breaking more regularly, and I had to borrow an ambulance from Hanson for a couple months because we just they just started. They were breaking. There wasn't anything I could do. And the unfortunate thing, any spare I could get my hand on other than Hanson, I had three fire chiefs offer me up multiple ambulances, but they're on their last legs. So if I had taken those ambulances and they broke, guess who has to fix them? I wasn't. I got enough vehicle problems with ambulances. I didn't need to fix somebody else's. So that represents that. If we keep four, I think we need to be at least there. Granted, one will be under warranty. We have a warranty with the new motor, but anytime we start to do work on these now, it's just crazy. And just as a side note, um, I don't foresee the Brockton Hospital. Um, it, it, there's no solution in the near future. So, so, I don't, so that's the ambulance billing comes back to the other thing. You see an increase in that. Although we did the contract, we got the percentage lowered with Coastal to 3 from 4% when we were with New England Medical Billing. We are going farther. We're charging more. We're making more money, and we're doing more procedures. So that just represents us bringing in more revenue because it's the 3% of that. Uh, let's see. I'm rebuilding maintenance. I could have, like, made all of you gasp and scream on this one. I only went up $2,500. Um... We, we had a chance for a couple of us to walk through the armory so you could take a look at it. It's actually, 12.5 is probably not enough. We're going to run into some complexities because depending on when the DPW project takes over or they start, the mechanics the mecha mechanics are going to move up to our place, which is going to increase electricity and heat. we got to make sure they have heat. we got to make sure they have running water. We just have to shut the water off now depending on when they're, I'm not sure when they're coming in. I know they're doing some stuff right now. But... The 12.5 is super conservative, but I think they'll, we'll end up having to work some things out with the DPW if they, they're using it. Um, as everybody saw, I think you'll see some stuff come through in capital. I know you guys only see it afterwards. Mm -hmm. You'll see some stuff come through in capital. I will say this. I can't lose the building. I need someplace to put all my stuff, but that being said, that building is worth saving. We do not need that to be another park app. It's part of the old armory building? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. good. So just quickly... Um, wouldn't the DPW have mate, have heating and other things in their budget? Wouldn't we just transfer the amounts and put it into the... I mean, I, you're asking for what you need, yeah, but you in terms of when their down. budget comes in... They have a building, maybe. They I don't know, maybe. They want to start to shut that down. Where's that money go? Yeah, they, 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 you know, we'd have to figure we'll out that so that we're... Yeah, so. we have to see their budget and see what they've allocated. Yeah, absolutely. They yeah. may have already done that. I, I have, like, this quasi-plan already to get the water back on, but it's going to involve buying some space heaters. And if you listen to WATD, I've spoken about space heaters negatively on the radio. Um but in order to have the water on in there for them to have a functioning bathroom, we're probably going to have to put a space heater in the boiler room that's currently there, one up in the bathroom, and one in the middle room, which is technically no one really goes in there. It's a police evidence room and my secure records room. We may end up throwing some space heaters in there so that they don't freeze, but they're going to need to have facilities. Just put it on put it on your radar. It's not happening tomorrow, I don't think, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I just brought up to um, Mary Beth and I... Um, I didn't put it into here. We had a break-in uh, within the last week. They um, cut the grate, they bent it up, they smashed a window, and they stole two radios. And the fire station? or uh, the, the armory. Oh, um, the armory. Armory. I'm um, sorry, I wasn't clear. The armory. They took a portable radio without the charger, so it's a paperweight. Like, once the battery dies, it's no good. Someone took a base station, which you can plug in and use. 
totally our finance committee. But I'm just letting you know, we're going to have to do some form of security there at some point. Whether we do motion detectors or alarms or cameras or something. Because when I got, when we police came there investigating, they were looking for cameras in the area. The thing that got to me is between tech rescue, I got three, five, you know, a search truck, an engine, a fire alarm truck, the tech rescue trucks in there, the mobile command post is in there, and the rescues in there, the medium duty rescues in there. There's millions of dollars worth of equipment. They, they could have destroyed it all. And they could have set the place on fire and not to be a smart aleck, but nobody would have known until they saw it. Like in the middle of the night, yeah. there's no alarm system or anything. So on that 12.5, maybe it's a capital project, I don't know, but we're going to have to do some form of security there just to make sure we don't we don't need that. That's that's the last thing we all need. Um, moving on, sorry, I get sidetracked. Holbrook Dispatch, that's contractual with them, 92881. It's pretty much the 3% increase standard across their board. I will tell you, I was questioned about, I was asked about this. Um, out of all the groups that have joined that regional dispatch center, we don't pay a whole lot. There's a lot of communities out there paying well over 100, 100 200. Do they charge, do they charge per capita? Or do they charge? Well, they get our 911 money because they're up percentage, and it was a flat rate. And I don't know what the original contract was with them. My contracts that come in, the one since I've been chief, just says that they'll provide the services for us. And for this amount, and I think a 3% a three percent increase generally on us um, being able to um, have six firefighters on the road is well worth, well worth that. Um, emergency management expense, we went up uh, $240. That could be greatly increased as when we ramp up our CERT program. We have some plans for our CERT team in the future about a regional thing because there'll be more uh, money is available through grants. So we're okay with that right now. The generator maintenance, which once is $9,000 again, um, he, Todd, I don't do any of that. I just pay for it. <clears throat> what we did is when I first became the emergency management director, one of the biggest focuses I had was getting each town building on a generator because we couldn't afford to lose a building. And we never really thought about it, right? Now the library has no power. Who cares? Well, we were going to care when the power went out. In the pipes froze and we lost the library. Same thing, like we have the heater and the armory keeping that going. It's not on generator power, but that's the only one left. But every town building now is on a generator, so that we have, it might not run everything, but at least we have the life safety stuff as far as fire alarms. You know, heat's working, we're not going to lose the pipes because if anyone's dealt with water problems and we deal with them professionally all went along, the only thing worse than water is fire. All right. To be honest with you. And actually, water probably does more damage, to be honest with you. So we have that. He's working on contracts to try and get, you know, he's actually out there working, talking to people, trying to get this. Because, like, we used um, FM Generator forever. They were out of Worcester or Holden or someplace out that way. Mm. Why did we use them? I don't know. We always used them. He became the he became the facilities director. He goes, I should shop around for these. So he has, and we've gotten a better price. But that that takes care of all the maintenance on all those. And over the years, as these get better, maybe replaced, and maybe we have a kitty at some point when we replace some of them. We've scavenged some. The old one from the DPW is at the library. There's one at the senior center now. So <clears throat> we've moved all that around. So in a nutshell, that's the town breakdown that they had sent to us. So fire salaries with the contractual is the four five zero five six zero five, correctly. Um, one of them was over at the middle school, and when the rebuild happens, it'd be... The there is a generator there. I don't know if they have any plans for it, because it's on the left side of the building, halfway down. I thought it was the town's generator. <clears throat> it's worth looking into, because that's a big generator. I, I I don't know, and I think anybody here might, that's been here a while can remember. Do you remember it came as an, in as an article for us, and they, they said they want it so it moves around between the two buildings? Yeah. And we I do remember it. that, but I don't think that's what they did. Oh, right. No, I think that's pretty much there. Yeah. That, okay, that's what they ended They changed but, their mind about the But we board. ended up paying for it, so it's our generator. Yeah. I looked into um, surplus stuff. Mm -hmm. I perused these these free sites to try and get free stuff, <laughs> which isn't always the greatest thing because some of it is junk. Um, I did look. Was try, I was trying to find a generator, an old army generator trailer because we had one before. Mm. God knows where it went. The only problem is I was long before I was fire chief, but I don't know where it went. They might have taken it back. It could have been surplus in that aspect. Something like that, but we were going to get one of those and move it around, but then you have to have the building wired anyways. Because everybody thinks I buy a generator and runs my yeah, house. Have have no, it doesn't work that way. In. You know, it doesn't work that way at all. Right. So switch. we're pretty solid with that. That's not a horrible thing to look into because it's another fairly good-sized generator for some place. Um, and that's more or less the breakdown of what they had sent out. And then the 479. And, and I'm... Being brutally honest with the expense, I don't know if that's enough. That was that was 
looking at it and what can we get by with. Um, as far as the regular salaries and some of that, um, we only added minuscule areas for the storms, some money to the storm area um, and stuff like that because we've had, I said this in a department head meeting, you might have been there, we have 100 year storms every three to five years now. And I've said it every year, not to beat a dead horse, but my ability to provide services directly related to the budget, unfortunately. It is directly related. So we've added a little bit here and there, but nothing crazy. Like I said, the in that current all other services, there is a, I got to talk to Mary Beth, it's on the third sheet. You can see the new position of a lieutenant. And then down the bottom, you can see the position of the firefighter. If you want to figure out what that money is, it's roughly the... In my head, it's $194,600 give or take ish. So that is the, the add on, and we're seeing step increases and such. <clears throat> and I always put it, well, I'll let you look at that. I've stayed at it for weeks, it makes sense to me. Okay, we'll open it up for questions. One last thing the last three pages, are, um, sorry, capital. capital, just so you're aware of it. And this is a question I'm asking because I don't know. We do that $150,000 a year when it's available, and you, you're the one who hit it out of the park with this. That's for an ambulance and or fire gear. I believe that's how it says I will confirm. You need to confirm that. Um, this is taken care of then, if it's in there, because there's $300,000 in that account. This is for the, just to let you know, so when it comes across, I know it's, I got to sit for our capital. They have two sets of gear because of cancer awareness, so after a fire, they have to wash their gear. They have to have another set to wear. Um, theirs expired about a month ago. We're living with it for now. And I think that money will have to be appropriated at the special. I don't think we can just transfer it. Right. Oh, no, it has yeah, to be go through town. So I've already asked if Capital approves that, that we do it at the special town meeting so I can order it in May. Because like everything else, it's going to take a while. Right. It, it still has to go through Capital, but the funding source certainly yes. can be through the ambulance account. It is, because it was it was, was an ambulance, spelled, spelled yeah, out. Ambulance spelled out, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, I couldn't find it, but that I know That needs to be clarified, Chief, because I, I thought it was ambulance and, and gear. And then I've asked this a couple of times, and I was told, no, initially it was going to be gear, but it's strictly ambulance. I I, 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 I'm pretty I sure. I can pull the paper out and read it to you today if you want, but I, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure. If, I'll do any due diligence, but too. If, but. Even, if, even if it isn't, we can change it if it's what's needed. You know. But um, what, when is the special town meeting? Oh, it'll be right before the regular one, probably. The yeah, it, within the within annual. annual. Special within, within the annual. Within the annual. Okay. And the only reason I asked for the special because then I got the money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is another admin card. We had talked about that last year. They told me where to you. So I put that in. And this one, everybody will gasp, right? The engine. Uh, it's a, the engine we have out there, the spare right now, is uber old. It's a 1990 Federal. It's been rehabbed once. It's actually in, it was in service this past week. It's in service right now because the second truck is out for pump testing. Um, and they asked, I was just asked, why'd you put in for it? Why is it so much? I'm going to semi be sarcastic. That truck's old. It's going to start costing us a ton of money. But more importantly, there's a three to four year wait on fire trucks now, and the price isn't going to stop. Like that, I put in 1.2. It's probably anywhere from 1.2, a million to 1.3 as we sit here right now. Aerial trucks for future planning. I got a plan. It's a capital thing, but don't worry about mm -hmm. it. For the future, when we go to order a new ladder truck, and we can probably get another eight. That was just refurbished a couple of years ago when I first took over, three years ago. So we can probably get another five, six, seven, but we're going to have to stop thinking about it. And ladder trucks right now are over $2 million-ish. And the, the problem is, not that people have to make a living, but they got you. You're going to buy a fire truck. You're buying one of three brands. And they're all they're all they're all comparable. So I'm putting it in now just to at least we're building point. taller buildings in the town. Now we, too. we are, you know, we're very fortunate with that hundred foot area. We had the money and we got it, the town support us. We got it refurbished, so we're good for a little bit. But the the pump, I put the pump in because we need to start talking about it for the sheer fact, just to let you all know, because you're the money people. They're not going to get any cheaper. Yeah. And it's if we order it now, we might not. Pierce, I was told, is 48 months if we would go with a Pierce. So we it's not a quick process to order. Okay. So you're probably almost looking at five years for ish by the time we get committees done. And everything. I just wanted to give you the heads up on that so when you see it come across, you know. That like, was oh part of the God. capital plan already, right. right, to order this. Well, I have, to a point. 
Right. Well, well uh, Don has not shared the capital. He has, except for two departments, has all of the capital requests, but he hasn't shared them with the committee members yet. He wants okay. to organize them. But have you provided a five-year capital plan for you? I have one, and him and I have talked about it. Okay. <clears throat> so it doesn't really matter in here. I'm currently redoing a strategic plan mm -hmm. for the fire department, just isolated to the fire department, and I'm also working on a five- and ten-year capital plan because okay. I'm not going to be here forever. Maybe. Right? Maybe. But I want the next person to be able to come in, take the file off, and sit down here and go, yeah. here's what we got coming in the next five, four, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's in the ambulance. The COVID ambulance is kind of throwing my thing in a little bit of a... I plan on trying to buy an ambulance every three years. And I'll tell you why. You're like, oh, 500 grand every three years? Yeah. Because my thought with doing it with this one, it's kind of a trial because it's the COVID money. Buy it. Buy the extended warranty. We get the eight years of it. So it does two years up front. It's probably going to be two or three years, three years up front. Three years is the second truck and three years in reserve. Yep. So only time that that truck's not covered by the extended warranty, and I ask for the good one, is the last year it sits in reserve. Last year in reserves. Last year in reserve. Because it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's like, it, they tried to, um, That's it might be a legal thing, but Ford is a trip. I'll just leave it at that. There, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. There was one point earlier this year we thought we lost an, uh, we had a problem with a, yeah, that's a valve, doesn't matter. And it looked like there was a possibility of an engine, an engine or an engine. And I'm like, I don't know, is that 10, 15? I don't know. Yeah, and they start telling me, uh, no, it's like 40, 50 grand, and then probably 20 to put it in. I'm like, oh, that, that that's not good. <laughs> yeah, like, thank God we were able to fix it. But if we can maintain the fleet you know, and keep it going, and I do appreciate the time you guys spent coming over and just, I think the the visit probably helped some visions. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I'll be honest with you, any of you, if you ever want to come by, if the black car's on the ramp, I'm there, stop by. You get the un, unedited tour. <laughs> <laughs> Wear some dirty clothes. You're going in the basement. Yeah. Oh, I was down there today. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Questions for the chief? I have my So, right. I just want to, while well, waiting for a few more, just to look back at the budget mailing that went out from the town administrator, right? This is the initial request for fiscal 25 budgets. We're in the process of reviewing revenue projections and overall expenditure levels. This year, please use a 2.5% increase for department head salaries, and please level fund all other expenses in your budget. What got missed from there to here? There is nothing missed. We're in collective bargaining. Yeah, right. I'm going into collective bargaining, and they can't tell me. Right. You're going to get 2.5%, and what's the point of bargaining? It's right. actually a violation of bargaining. Right. So that's... That's the part for the salaries. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then the fire, the fire salaries, all other services, it's contractual. Right, it's not to be, not to be abrupt, but it, I, I live by a contract. With like the exception this, of the two positions. So with those, though, I mean, I put those in every year. <laughs> so I, yeah, I know that. I've been in five years. Yeah, they come in every year. Um, the contractual thing with the two other positions, you know, I, I got the same email everybody else did, mm -hmm. but I know there's other department. Uh, well, I just know that that's where the range is right now. Okay. All right, I just um, put down a couple more questions, too. Um, so the um, for the forest uh, fire, mm -hmm. right, yep. expended in 2023 was $433, mm -hmm. and the budget uh, was $2,000. Yep. So, so what do you expect uh, for expenses in forest fire that would exceed that, what you spent last what year? What we do a lot of times is when we just buy parts. It's through our general parts maker, and the DPW puts them in. I just take them out of the other line for the other trucks. I specifically save that as my cushion because it's a 1986 military surplus, and we could have catastrophic failure. So I nest that away specifically for that truck. Um, we have this massive oil leak right now. They told me it's going to be five, $600 in parts, and he's going to put it in. So we're going to eat up on that. And hopefully that goes away in the future with the new truck. Okay. And I know you talked a little bit about line 585 with the EMA expense. Mm -hmm. right? Last year we expended 1576 and we're doubling that amount in what we're requesting for 20. So that is, part of that was we didn't have anything going on with COVID. I'm trying to get the CERT team back up and running. A lot of the money expenditures comes from the EMA. I oversee it as the fire chief, but as the emergency management director. And we 
we're planning on we're planning on getting them much more active and getting them in, which in turn will end up will end up buying more supplies. Um, I was fortunate; I didn't have to pay for the. Um, we have a third party weather service the DPW and I have access to. I thought I was going to have to pay for that as well, but I think Bruce picked it up or someone picked it up. I still have it. Um, we're trying to increase that so that we can get more active on that level. Part of it is when I have the CERT team in, and this is where a gray area comes in, I have people come in and operate my EOC. I ask them to come in for 8, 10, 12 hours. I've never fed them. And you know what? That's wrong. Like, I'm asking you to be here and I'm not feeding you. The last time I had to feed them, I'm not trying to be a hero. I paid for it out of my own pocket because it turned into such a, such, such a, you know, it was like a hundred bucks or something. It wasn't worth the headache. But I'm trying to increase that budget to develop more programs. I want to bring some more people in to do some to cert training classes. Not try and bring in the state. Although I'm hearing that they might do them for free, which is very cool, which is even better. But if I have any expenses associated with bringing those classes, in, such as the ICS classes and stuff. And I'm going to try it. They had one at the police station. I might try and bring another weather spotter class down for the CERT team so that they can be trained in the weather events. But that's where that one came from. Okay. And then just backing up to uh, on the other side of the spectrum for line 121 clerical. So we expended 52238 and we only budgeted 45000 last year. So you had to pull from some other line, right? Mm-hmm. You talked yeah. about that, yeah, right? Yeah, Because of the transition, we had the old, it, shame on me. We had the month overlap, and I didn't. I didn't really think Lisa was retiring, to be honest with you. I didn't, and we ended up having the month overlap, and that's where it came from. Um, I'm sitting down. I'll just tell you, you might see that change. I'm sitting down with the when I do my meeting with the town administrator. Amy's job title is more of an executive assistant to the fire chief, not as a clerical. And I did a survey in the community, surrounding communities, and that will come with a pay increase. I did a survey, and I went on the low end of that survey. So you would see an increase of roughly, in my head, I didn't bring it here tonight, about four or $5,000 on that, with that increase with the job title. In that change, and I have to talk to Mary Beth about this because I just can't do it, right? Like, right. But you've got to give me the money. So let's work together as a team. Um, her job falls much more in line as, as not clerical. She isn't just typing letters and answering phones. She's intricately involved in helping me interpret the contract, doing the budget, doing dealing with the code enforcement. We also had the deputy retire in October. So Amy has been, without a doubt, a godsend because I've done both jobs since October. I ain't ever there. Well, I'm there, but I'm not in my office doing all my stuff. Fortunately, I have a very competent assistant that when I come in, there's a bunch of stickies on stuff that says sign here. And I do, after I look at it. But we're very fortunate to have Amy in that position to help me out. That answer? Yes. And, and, and Lisa was a long-time employee, like a... Um, Lisa must have done 18 years, I should give or take, give or take. So she was the highest step. Right. Yeah, but right. then that was the problem, that we adjusted it at town meeting because it was an oops on my part. Like I said, I didn't really think she was retiring. Okay. Thank you very much for that answer. Anybody? Rosemary. I'm going to do my standard thing. Has anything in the laws changed? Has there anything in the demographics changed? Populations changed to affect your budget? Well, we have not directly been affected by it. There is an immig- uh, there's, a, there's an immigration crisis going on. Communities around us are being affected drastically. Um, communities not too far from us have had two or three hotels overtaken. Uh, not overtaken, but taken over. The state's taken them over. And the thing that's not being publicly shared, and whatever with this thing, is this is not a short-term process. This is a long-term process. They've entered into year-long contracts for the ability to extend for a much greater period of time. We have not seen the direct impact, but we don't know what the future holds right now as far as development in this community. There could be some, you never know, there could be something on the horizon. Um, The biggest thing that has affected us and changed us is that Brockton Hospital being closed. It's killing us. It's longer transport times. They're going farther. And we were talking, I think we talked about it when I did the inspection. They're going to Boston. We've been down to Plymouth. Uh, they, I think we talked about they went to Morton and Taunton. Like, I haven't been to the Morton Hospital in Taunton since I worked for Norfolk, Bristol when I was like 19 years old. Right? I don't know that I could get there again. But we're going farther, which in turn is a trickle down because I maintain three, which I should maintain four, but I maintain three for the extra call. So if both ambulances go, I only have two people on the station. So we activate recall. I may get none, I might get five. It's, it all depends. It's a voluntary thing to come back. Um, 
and that's affecting us greatly because they're gone. Two weeks, was it two weeks ago? Whatever, um, there was another incident at the Good Samaritan Hospital involving a sewer and some power issues. I'll leave it at that. I got a phone call that our ambulances, the ambulance wait time at Social Hospital was 90 minutes to deliver a patient. Hour and a half standing there with your patient. So that's a trickle down. One, the truck's there. My guy, those guys are our service. But more importantly, I'm having to bring people back in. And something about this, this town that just never ceases to amaze me since I was a kid. We do one, we do two, then we do three, four, five. You know, I've, I've thought about a third ambulance. I don't have enough people for it. Mm-hmm. But we do do that second and third call enough that we could possibly run down the, down the road, yes, but we could run that third ambulance sometimes. So the population hasn't... Um, in any way, like, age-wise, has nothing to do, nothing? You know, we we cater to our elderly. We do a lot of calls, but that's been consistent throughout my entire career. Um, I don't think we've seen any one specific demographic increase. Okay. We're busier than we have been, uh, but these wait times and everything, that's what's getting us. Okay. And the recall, and, and it's a chance, right? We might only get three people in, but then call three, four, five, go on. And it turns from a two-hour recall. So from the normal hours from uh, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to midnight, it's a two-hour minimum recall. I believe it's from midnight to 6 is a four-hour recall. But during the day, if you, you roll the dice if you come in on a recall. You come in on a recall, you might be there for 45 minutes. You might be there for four hours. Well, I've, had, I've had people in all day long. They're like, I just want to go home. I'm like, well, if we stop doing calls, you can go home. You know, we just don't have this. We have to. We have to staff up because, and I've said it. I think I said it at a town meeting. It's great if you're emergency number one or emergency number two, but you still really want us to come if you're emergency three, four, or five. Mm-hmm. And that's just purely staffing. I mean, I have a staffing plan and the strategic plan, but we're not going to do it tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for you that. Good. Any you questions? Say, okay. Any further questions? Yeah. Just so you know, on the salary side, you've budgeted for overtime and you're also looking to add another firefighter mm-hmm. does, is that going to mitigate some of that overtime cost not not at this level so my ultimate plan with the day office is that gives me my three during the day okay so would it cut down on recall during the day it could okay. if they're available but they might be in the middle like if i was in the middle of that church inspection today and they're like can you take an ambulance call actually actually i can't they've taken time out of the day i'm there doing the inspection i need to finish this out I know what I need to eliminate some of that, mm. and it's not one. Okay. <laughs> it's, it, 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 you know. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it would be a question I would expect to come up anyways, yeah. right? Is um, If we're adding bodies, it should cut back on on overtime asks. You know, my my ultimate goal would be to self, be self-sufficient at some point. To I, I mean, the, the members rely on the recall to a point, but it would be nice to be able to staff my ambulances and the fire truck with people in the building and not rely on people coming back because it's great on a Wednesday at 3 when nobody's got anything going on. But there's a lot of times. They're pretty good about coming back, and some of them are diehard, and they bought big houses, and they have mortgages. But some of them, you know, younger kids, we have a changing demographic in the department. Mm-hmm. We're very old. We're yeah. very young. Okay. And the very young are having kids now, say, which, yeah. which kind of, you know, as we... Most of us in here know it kind of changes your lifestyle a little bit when you have kids. That's where we are. So we that's the weird demographic for us right now. We have an older senior department, but the other half, they're young. And they're getting married and they're having kids and all that. And it's kind of a weird mixture right now. When I came on, I was the kid, and they were all old. They were all adults, and all, they all had grown children, so they could do whatever they want. You know, it's tough for someone to find a babysitter sometimes to come in on recall. Mm-hmm. So the extra position would be to alleviate some of the code enforcement stuff. Okay. And some of the EMS stuff. I've tried to do one of each. I'm willing to morph it into one spot to have that person there. But if that person was available, that would give me the three, and it could possibly limit the day recall. That's a good question. There is a number on my head. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Not tonight. <laughs> All right, Chief. Thank right, you very much. much. Anything yeah. comes up, you know uh, you can call any time. Uh, you know me. I know you. Yeah. Uh, I'm dead serious. If you do want to talk, and I'm not... I think they can attest. Come, stop by. Yeah. If the Tahoe's on the front ramp, I'm there, and I'm not to be sarcastic. I'm, I'm there a lot. It's an eye opener. That's yeah, different. No, it's an eye it opener. Has. You go through the tour. It's like okay. It has all the buildings. Yeah, this is a lot. Amy, thank you for coming as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Right. Thank, thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. All right.
Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ken, you're up. My turn. Oh, Ken. How are you? Right on schedule. Is that two minutes late. Is that our old friend Ken? Oh, yeah, that's no, Ken. we missed you. <laughs> he came to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we used to have we a Ken. Ken. We used to have a Ken. We yeah. an inside story. <laughs> Although he looks a little grayer. Oh, I know, that's just the, really personal. There's more enough, responsibilities man. with a new job. <laughs> I would say it's the kids, but the work down there might be putting something <laughs> on it. <too. laughs> All right, so Ken Lytell, we're going to go around the table and introduce everybody. We I'm have Mike Warner. Right. New member. Ralph Mitchell. John Mills. Oh, that's you. It's Matt Lucas. Take one, pass it on. Chuck Kobe. And Rick Anderson. So can I add this sheet to it, too? Sure. This is a late sure. uh, uh, Is this, that one sheet? It's just one sheet, yeah. Uh, you like your I'm, I'm getting to like it more. Yeah, okay. it was um, some of the like some of the budgeting stuff that I kind of miss. Take one. I can um, take one. I was I, my one year anniversary was November first, so now I'm starting to see the annual things a second time. So the light bulb turns on, um, and it's it's nice to be able to do things and refer to directions that I have than can understand. Um, but I've still a lot to learn. I've got at least another two or three years before I can get the first certification. What type of certification? Well, it was what was emailed. Just curious. Um, the, there's a treasurer exam and a collector exam. Oh, okay. One is a lot harder than the other. It's from what I've heard. Thank you. All right, and Ken, our recording secretary, Elizabeth Murphy, as well. Introduce her. Okay, did everybody have a packet in front of them? You got any extras there, Michael? This should be... Uh, uh, I don't think so. Okay. This is one packet. Do we have another one of the... Single page? Single, single page. page. Take this one. All right, thank you, sir. All right. I'll look on check. All right, so um, you are free to go. Go ahead. You're uh, You're up. Okay, so um, oh, right there. there's a there. The treasure collector salary was um, two and a half, just to mesh with um, what the union had. Um, my staff salaries are all over the place. Um, the benefits clerk um, gets two and a half percent according to the union contract, and she goes from step fifteen to step eighteen, um, effective September eighteenth. Uh, that comes with a roughly one and a half percent increase. So that explains the 4.14% in that line. Ken, let me just hold you up there. So the packet that you have is on the third page. He's looking at his uh, budget summary right, there we go. for the treasure collector. And I usually tell you that that's Department 7, and it starts on line 112. Oh, sorry, I should have gave a little bit more pre-information. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, the assistant treasure collector, um, also 2.5% per the contract, and she goes from step 4 to step 5, effective January 25th. Um, and that comes with it a roughly 3% increase, which explains the close to 6% there. Uh, the treasurer clerical, um, I hired the uh, clerical um, staff member in the clerk's office to fill a vacancy effective October 30th um, last month. Um, so my previous clerical um, position was a step two or a step, no, um, step two or step three. And my new staff is a step 15, which is a significant bump. Um, so you will see me in May for the line item transfer that will come at the end of the year. Um, clerical payroll, 2.5% um, per the contract, and she goes from step 4 to step 5, effective March 8th, which is a roughly 3% bump there. Uh, clerk collector clerical, 2.5% um, according to the contract, and she jumps from step 18 to step 20, effective November 15th, and there is a roughly 3% bump that comes with that. So that's why all of my staff are more than two and a half percent. The overtime and the expense line I kept level funded. Uh, nothing for the last two. Uh, debt service, the principal and interest payments, the 480 and the 12800 are based on the uh, police station town hall buildings debt payment um, that will come due uh, at the end of June. Uh, the miscellaneous debt service of 2000 is based on the continuing disclosure form that I have to file with Ken, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but we don't have that, uh, those line items that he's referring to in the thing that you printed out. It only goes to line 121. If you want to pull it up on your laptop, you can pull up the, yeah, the budget. what was sent from the... Uh, I thought I sent that a few weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know if I did. you did. No, you did. Okay. You did. 
Yep. So it's, it's more comprehensive than what we were just passed out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Do you see where we are now and where the paperwork that was passed out was a little lacking on that? So I could just turn on all over and keep going. <laughs> November 11th. It's November 11th, if you want to pull it up on your device, if you have an internet yep. connection. Uh, so now, I'm sorry, where did you leave off on the treasure collectors? Uh, um, are you moved down to the debt service? Debt service section, yeah. Okay. Um, so the 2000, um, that is what we are charged from um, Unibank or UFASI for our financial advisors for the continuing disclosure forms that we fill out every year, um, which is sort of something that every department, well, it, it comes to me, but then I have to pass that to every department to give them the um, the information that comes from the audit, um, stuff from the assessor's office about valuation um, and growth, um, the accountant's office for taxes and the levy, and it's 35 pages of um, exciting stuff. Um, so it's uh, it's charged to that line there. Um, the Title V debt service line, uh, that comes from the uh, debt schedule uh, that you should have too. Um, I tried to color code it, but black and white printers kind of made that moot. Um, there's a, the small numbers on the left and the right make up that 2706. Um, and, uh, some of that, this is actually the last year of that payment. So that 2706 will drop down to 729 next year. Um, the OPEB trust fund contribution, um, the 140,000 has been, um, a standard contribution that we'll be making for, um, the next several years. Um, that is what we've been contributing since before I took the position. Um, and unless our budget allows us to increase it, I'm going to keep it the same. Um, the intent was to keep that in line with the revenue we were getting from the local meals tax. Meals tax right. um, that has since swelled up to over 200000 but I'm not increasing that 140 unless we have the room for it. Um, the uh, Group 21, the Whitman Hanson School District, um, 38726 is the projected debt service payment we'll be making for the high school. Um, that is based on our percent share of the enrollment in the district. Um, the enrollment figure that I'm using was 60.61% from last year. Uh, John Stanbrook is going to get me a more accurate percent uh, percentage figure in January. Uh, he thinks it's going to be higher than that, um, so that line may climb up a little bit, um, depending on what we have for enrollment. Uh, the 187 is the one that sticks out the most in the budget. That's for the feasibility study for the middle school. Uh, we, uh, the middle, the uh, district took out a ban um, for the feasibility study that we now have to pay back um, over the next three years at the very at the very least. Um, initially, um, this was divided up into three equal payments of 166,667 per year for three years. Um, I put in 187 to account for um, interest, um, but an email that I got from John about a week or two ago uh, said that the uh, due to some MSBA um, funding that they've received and some projects, come, some pieces of the study coming in less than anticipated, um, we may not owe as much in that first year. Uh, so 187 may be considered a worst case scenario figure. Um, his suggestion was that it could be as low as 50000 plus interest, depending on whether we want to take all three years to pay it back or to do year one and two together, in which case that 187 would go up to about 225 or 230 um, But then we wouldn't have a band payment to make for the fiscal 27 budget. Um, and it, it depends on what other room we have um, elsewhere. I don't want to just take it all and say, I want it to pay this. If we have room to pay it, um, we can pay it. Um, the water sewer enterprise, those three lines will all come off of the debt service schedule that you have. Um, I tried to break down the principal and interest and the miscellaneous, uh, items, uh, for each, um, debt piece that goes with it. Um, the reason that the principal has dropped so much, um, is because the budget for fiscal 24 was anticipated to have our first uh, water sewer force main payment for it, but the timeline for that keeps getting pushed back um, along with the project also being under budget and with the loan forgiveness that we got. Uh, the first uh, debt payment with principal now isn't coming until fiscal 26. Um, 
I don't know if it's had, I don't think it's going to get push, pushed back any more than that. But um, so the so the first payment that we're making for the sewer force main is just the sixty seven thousand eight sixty seven, and that is uh, loan origination fees uh, and admin fees. Um, I lumped that into the interest group instead of principal because it's not really a principal payment to pay down the loan. And if the miscellaneous line went from eight thousand to about sixty five thousand, that would raise eyebrows. Um, so I put it in the interest line, uh, but it is a piece that we have to pay back. Um, and the townwide expenses, the Plymouth County retirement, that was the, uh, the extra sheet that I handed out. Um, the last line on it should show the fiscal 25 contribution. Um, we, they give you the option of paying in two installments, one in July and one in January, or you can pay it all in July and get a little bit of a discount. Um, so you save like 60000 on $3 million, which, sure. <laughs> um, so this, the, the increase from fiscal 24 to 25 was supposed to be smaller, uh, but the increase from 23 to 24 was supposed to be enormous. So the, the actuary uh, worked some magic to sort of make 24 light, but on, at the expense of 25. So that um, increase is still felt, but that should, should level off as we get further along. Um, cause uh, I'm kind of sick of seeing these increases probably as much as anybody else. And there's nothing we can really do about it, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is as far as that line goes. Um, and that's my budget. For those who are uninitiated, that was a Herculean presentation for all of the <laughs> departments that the treasurer collector is responsible for. So just backing up a little bit, I just want to just generally talk about the departments that the treasurer collector just reported. So department seven is the treasurer collector budget. That's lines 112 to 308. And then he talked about department 33, which is debt service. And then line 34, which is OPEB, which he kind of explained. That's our outstanding liability for uh, pension fund contributions. And then Department 21 is the Whitman Hanson Regional School District, and they talked about the debt service associated with that department. And then Department 23 is the Water Sewer Enterprise, and Department 35 is the Townwide Expenses. So there's a lot to unpack there for people who aren't familiar with this particular budget presentation. So it, it, it's, you know, a little bit much. Uh, and so just, you said that um, an additional page was emailed. Did you send more than one email out? Because I have one email that just has what's here on here. No, this was the original budget uh, presentation. Uh, okay, the, you had started reading all the lines out? There should be one from November 11th. Oh, November, November 11th. Thank you. Yeah. And the Excel file had two tabs to it. I don't know if those Yes, I have the two tabs. The salary is new. Okay. And that's not the November 11th one. That's... There's another one in November 11th, correct? Yes. And so all the so there was a lot of backup associated. There was a draft Schedule C, right? Uh, debt schedule. Yep. Yep. So there, there was there's a lot to unpack there yeah, for all of those departments. It's easier. So, for, oh. Go ahead. It's easier for me to talk about those debt payments because I'm the one that's making them and I'm the one that has the schedules uh, for the departments that are responsible for, to talk about them. I guess, which is why um, when we. Um, when the budgets were put together, that that's why these are in with the treasure collector and it's not with those individual departments. Because those individual departments are not going to be as versed on the information that you just got from Ken. Nope. You'd be hard-pressed to get that information from Water Sewer Enterprise. They, they always defer to the treasure collector. Mm -hmm. If you remember their presentation, always says, well, if you have questions on that, ask the treasure collector. So. So it's good to have that in advance, but it is a lot to unpack. And if you didn't look at this a week in advance, you're going to be hard-pressed to have questions for Ken. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, that being said, does anybody have any questions for Ken? All right. Well, I, I started a little sooner, so I have a couple. Uh, so you did explain very well about the, uh, the union positions. I think what's important to note uh, in the Department 7 Treasurer Collector is the fact that despite all of those increases over 2.5%, the Treasurer Collector salaries only rose 1.23%. I think that's, that's pretty telling. When I talked about the, the budget mailing cover letter that went out from the town administrator saying 
level service, try to keep this within X, Y, and Z, Treasure Collector has done that with, with those union salaries and the bottom line coming in at 1.23%. I think that's exemplary, you know. And that's what we should be expecting from departments. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's interesting to know, you know, what the challenges are in the departments, but it's also something to be realistic about when we look at the overall budget. There's going to be, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing to cut there, right? I, mean, I think you would agree. Right and fiscal twenty six. I'm not going to have it, well, assuming that I have my staff stays the same. I'm not going to have any. Yeah, everyone I, every everyone step stepped this year. Yeah. Yep. So they all went up steps. So you're saying the treasurer collector salaries went up only up one point seven percent, but it says five point eight here. Is there? Right. Are you talking above and beyond contract? Only went up one point seven or total salaries? Right, went up one point two three percent. I mean, we're looking at uh, the treasurer collector himself put in for a 0.11% increase. Um, uh, yeah, treasurer collector salaries. I'm just looking at the line and the percentage increase. Leaving five point. It's yeah, right on the budget. So maybe his separate... Am I budget. looking at an, an older copy here? And I'm looking at the 1111. The oh, that's last year. Oh, fiscal 24. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I pulled this out of the file. Okay, I'm sorry. So the salaries went up. Thank you, Rosemary. Five point eight six percent because of all those step raises. Sorry, so thank you. Praised, and I really just <laughs> there, there goes I your praise right out the window. I mean, I love uh, this man. So I'm. Just <laughs> I'm sorry. I pulled this out of last year's to develop questions from last year's submission, <laughs> and that's what I was. You did following. a good job last year. I was following <laughs> along with that. You did a good job this year. I mean, you got steps from that. Well, right. yeah. Did, did, I mean, so he could have done the two and a half for everybody across the board, plus the step, and you'd see a much bigger. Okay, so that's the question. Which is something about we've seen beyond, already from others. I'd like to see the percentage of. Above obligation, like uh, mm -hmm. above the step, and that would give it because we've got jet. Oh, sorry, don't want to use staff names. We've got one person at a 15 transferring into your department, and, um, and yeah. that's going to make a difference. So, above you know, obligations that you can't have no control over, what's the percentage of that? Did you want that, Rick? Ooh, Rick could probably compliment you after that, <laughs> yeah. Then we can fold it too. So. <laughs> so the only other question, or, or, or just kind of a statement that I have, is related to the, the Department Thirty Three on the debt service, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the question I have, or like looking for an overall statement about debt service, would you say that we have been underfunding debt service for the last five years? We have. We don't really have a very good debt service schedule for the last five years because we haven't had any. Right? Yeah. And so what would you say about the health of that? Just It's, I mean, I think it, it doesn't help that we had been kicking the can with the DPW building, because having that on the books earlier would have helped the debt service, I think. Move them it right out. It's, it's, right? It would have. And, it, and it's delayed debt. And it's not like you can just say, like, the fire chief was just here. It's not like something you could fix, well, we'll hire an extra body. Like how? Like how are you going to find debt? It's, right, it's yeah, hard yeah. to find debt. Right. But when you keep saying no to projects, you're not doing yourself. We're giving anything. it to you, and you're saying no to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in a sense, I'm just looking for you know the taxpayers to understand that we are in this position, you know, because we kicked the can down the road, as you said. You know what I mean? And so, at some point, we have to like take the hit, and unfortunately, we're coming into that time. Uh, right. Just to to support what Rick is saying, one of uh, the towns that we were comparing ourselves to was Duxbury for a, for a percentage of EQV, right? And our percentage of EQV was like, what, 0.62% of debt, and they are 0.5, 2 point something percent of the EQV for debt. And of course, the larger the town is, the more you're going to do. So you're just using that percentage and the legal limit is five percent of your EQB. So we're like comparative to other towns where some of this we handle some of the smallest. I mean not now that we've done the middle school and we're going through we're gonna get onto a more responsible debt cycle. But um, we have some of the smallest amounts of of debt. So just to support what Rick is saying there in terms of getting on a better debt cycle and handling it and maybe 
you know, that fire building of a senior center is going to fall into the debt that we currently have and we would be hopeful that we can continue without increases and jumps. Yeah. You know. And you have some standard questions you like to ask. I kids? do, but any, anything with the population, the laws, or the uh, demographics creating any change in your department or budget? Um, nothing this year, but there are a few things I've noticed. Um, since I've been down there now for a little bit of time to sort of see things. Um, there are a lot more challenges that we've had to put through at the window with um, residents who aren't strong with English, where we've had to sort of, um, like, they pull, pull up the online payment processing system on their phone and we have to, like, walk them through how to pay the bills and we have to you know, explain to them that there, you know, these were like deputy demand notices that come through. There were other notices that came before this. This isn't the excise bill. If they, you know, if people haven't driven before, that you know, they don't know that there's an excise bill that they have to pay. And it's when you have, and if depending on what time of year it is, if it's like a bill crunch season, like we're nearing the end, like the water bills are due on Thursday. If we have to like have somebody at the window for like 10, 15, I had to spend 25 minutes at the window with somebody once, and there are lines that start coming, like we can't, it's hard to, I mean, it, it's hard, A, to have to devote that much time to it, but B, to have to like see the struggle that some of these residents are going through, that they're having, like to have to understand the, the stuff that goes on, like the basic stuff that goes on in the town. And I'm like short of like putting up like, signs or like like instruct not instructions in like different languages so that they can read it when they come to the window it's 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 hard like to so, like so to, instead of sign could you have a book that in each language describing you know if you're asking questions or a website something on our website what kind there, of solutions yeah. that do you think you could have um, is it a language issue or is it just a uh, 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 awareness. It's like some of them will come with their kids, like mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're teenage kids that will serve as translators. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is, it is yeah. Yeah. translation. We're, high, we're yeah. increasing okay. ESL um, in our school, so I assume. So I've tried to work towards making things more so that you don't have to come to town hall to, make, to, pay, to, pay, to pay a bill, so that you can pay online, whether it's with the check or credit card standard, but you can pay on your phone by text. You can pay hopefully soon with, like, Apple Pay or Venmo, which may be coming down the line with Unibank. Um, text alerts, you can set up auto pay so that you can set, you know, I want to pay my water bill on this day and this day every two years when it's due. Boom, out the door. So you don't have to, so that we can decrease the traffic that we have. And there are flyers that Unibank has given us that we can, that we can, that we were going to put in the inserts with the bills, but with all the bills that we have, that's extra mail that gets expensive and it's would sort of, defeat the purpose of putting flyers in there, but if I can put the copies of those flyers out at the window, it, not just in English, but maybe in Spanish, Portuguese, or whatever, so that they can see that there are these options with the websites to use, I'm, like, it's just, I'm trying to think of something that can make it easier for them so that we don't Does have to... Does the website have a translating aspect? I know when you're on your phone, you can actually translate on your phone, but does that yeah. website also provide this same information in Portuguese, which I'm sure you're seeing a lot of. It's and, more Portuguese than Spanish, I yeah, think, just from what I've seen. Yeah, there's Portuguese, and probably you're going to see an increase in Haitian, too. And, uh, That's French. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if there's like a collaboration that could be established with the, with the library or something to have an outreach, to have somebody come in, have you know a bilingual person come in and explain with you uh, to... for people who have questions, you know, set up a, a, a day. Police had said something that they had a Someone they had to call in sometimes. They have a translator. So right, they right. They had using. Yeah, we, they pay for something. There was some kind of translation service. Mm -hmm. but it's, so that's something to think about. It, yeah, it's hard because we don't know when it's like it's not yeah. scheduled. They just yeah. Yeah. come in they, and they like call. it yeah. drops. <laughs> I don't want to say it just drops on us, but it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whenever they come in to pay a bill. <laughs> when they're um, out of work, <laughs> yeah. second. That's maybe something to have to look at with the IT department because our. <laughs> It's going to be a problem of the of the town's website, mm -hmm. right? Other services, not just like the stores, right? All these, yeah. but this is uh, there are ways to to 
to reformat that and have that information available in multiple languages. There must be towns that do it, like Brockton must do it. Absolutely. Um, somewhere in Brockton. So. Fall River is also very famous. Oh yeah, famous New Bedford, yeah. Fall River. But I mean, Which these things are, this is normal now. Go to any any website, like Amazon, any of those that sell stuff, Wait. choose your language in the upper right hand side. Yeah. Right. Um, so it might be time for us as a town to consider that. I know it's not our purview, but right. this is a wider issue for the town. Yeah. Well, so, it is our purview because it's collecting for particularly his party because it allows us to collect money. Anything that has money involved. So if we no, can't get money, it would I'm saying, but it's not, you know, we don't tell the town yeah. people oh, how, we don't how, tell to, do how to do it. Yes. No, we don't. Yeah, so that's something to bring up for the town administrator for sure. Yeah. I think yeah. in this election, yeah. uh, through a policy decision, could implement something. So one more thing just to bring up for, for Rosemary's questions with related to OPEB. Do you see anything coming down the road about, uh, you know, mandating that we increase our distribution for OPEB? Is there any? I know there, there was some talk about mandating that we increase what we send. Does everybody understand what the OPEB is all, you know, related to? So, but you don't know of any legislation that's pending or... Nothing that would mandate an increase. No. Okay. I, I I thought that those updates or demanding is when you're falling behind, but when you had a pattern of paying a consistent amount, they could have they can calculate. Okay, we at least you're going to get this amount in, but if you're erratic, they're more right. strict. Like that's going to happen on the school level. But 140,000 is 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 not really making. Not no, no. To make it more progress than it was like seven years ago, we should do like 30000 What do you think the total liability is? Do you know? I think we want to. Hundreds of millions? The, I, I, there are a lot of numbers I can start off the top of my head, but that's not one of them. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't delved that far into it yet. So. Okay. You know, it, it, <laughs> He it's said been a while year now. Four. He'll get on it on year four. <laughs> Sorry. That's a dedicated that year mills two tax. Now. That yeah. mills tax. That's Sorry. What it is. But it's always been 140. And obviously, it's been higher and higher. Maybe, maybe we should. You know, it might not be a bad idea to think of a percentage increase, depending on the um, increase on that. It's like paying it's, your bills a little bit. I think it was like two twenty six last year. You know? The meals tax. That's yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, it's a pretty big increase. Hmm. All right. Uh, further questions for Ken. The one other. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. The uh, one other demographic item that I've noticed too was um. This month, we had a lot of seniors come to the window. Um, that have asked us some alarming questions. Um, when are my taxes, uh, pertaining to the middle school vote, like when are my taxes gonna go up? How much longer do I have to sell my house? Like, the, and these aren't phone calls. They mm -hmm. came to us mm -hmm. and asked us these questions. And I mean, what it's, I mean, we don't, we don't set the amounts on the bills. We just make sure you pay it. Uh, so we just kind of like, I, the selectman's office. Yeah, yeah, that would be where I would point to. But this is, this is it. This has to do with that thing that was presented. First of all, they said one year that they were going to, you know, the bills were going to go straight up. That's from the town meeting where they, in, in the newspaper where we allowed for improper information. And it didn't show any increases from builds from the MBTA Community Act or anything else, but you're going to have more people helping that debt, hopefully. more buildings. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully Maybe. if it's done correctly. Done correctly. So this is the sort of thing you don't, you know, you want to have a, you want to have an honest, it's not going to be for another three years that we see those big pieces. So, and then even at that, you know, as we build, we're going to see something different. So it was, this is why I called it propaganda. Mm -hmm. It, because it created fear and it did this. It was well. It's, not, it's, it's we can't go back. But like, where do we go from here? Like I said, get some ideas together on how we can do outreach, how we can get more information yes. to taxpayers in multiple languages. I think that's a great initiative. Yeah. Kathleen, you had something. I did, and if I think for a minute, it'll come back to me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to tag on to Rosemary for expenses. a second. There's no increase uh, in your expenses. Oh uh, no! It came back to me. Okay. <laughs> nope. Well, I don't that's what I was kind of. I was kind of on the same thing. Was I, I'm used to regulatory changes that might require certification or other training. Is that already factored in for your your folks for new certs or existing certs? Um, as far as I know, um, my assistant has the option to go to get trained. Like it's open for either of us to do it. Mm. Um, 
But she sort of, well, I don't want to say she deferred to me because I, well, not only do I have to, I, I need to go because it's, yeah. it's an option. It's an option for me to learn more about the position, um, to be more familiar with it, to talk to people um, around the Commonwealth that have been in this position for 10, 15, 20 years, um, pick their brains, um, sit in on classes. It's, it'd be foolish for me not to go. Yeah. Um, the, it is built in there. Um, it's only, it's just, it's in August. This was when I already went this past August. Um, and there is an annual meeting, I want to say in June. Um, but the August classes are where you really, you, you take the classes that you have to take before you take, this have to sit for the exam. Um, and the treasurer exam, collector's exam are two separate. Um, so you have to, um, so it's it's at least a six year track before you can pass both. Okay. Um, it's like going to those classes in August. It's it's not mandatory, but it is for me. Yeah. To no, I, learn what I, I just didn't know if there was anything that popped in there. Um, I'm used to dealing more with the accounting side, so CPAs have to get their certifications, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and, and it was always built into their budgets. But I just didn't know if you had a similar. Mm -hmm challenge here. So. Oh, okay. Yep. And then there's always continuing aid you got to take too. Absolutely. You have to go back. I have to, but the, I got to go back to Amherst to maintain my accountant certification this year or next. Hopefully. So I'll be, <laughs> I'll be making that commute to Amherst way more than I want to. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> and it's a, it's a long commute. They don't offer an online version for that now? Uh, now that COVID has been lifted. No, unfortunately. <laughs> they might. All right. Further questions for Ken? All right, Ken, if anything comes up and you need us to get a hold of some new information or anything gets updated, you send an email, give me a call. You know where to find me. Yep. You, know you might have to wait in line, but you know where to find me. <laughs> Very good. All right, thank you once thank again. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. It's nice seeing you. Yeah, good to see you again, Ken. All right. So, those are the two budget meetings for today on our agenda. Interesting dynamics from both presentations. I'm glad that uh, the fire chief tones things down every day. <laughs> you guys, you'd be shocked if you knew what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right, so uh, make sure I have the right agenda. Apologize for that snafu with that budget. Mm -hmm. um, so under um, the meeting schedule, right, amendment. So if we take a look at the meeting schedule, Elizabeth, do you have a copy up on the computer? I have, yes. Not Anybody else have this handy? I'll just yes, I'm looking at give you a verbal. Um, so Whip and Hanson, just to give you some information, I've reached out to the departments 30 days in advance, confirmed all of them, but the Whip and Hanson District, uh, Whip and Hanson Regional School District said that the December 12th date does not work for them. So Kathleen was of the idea to move the Whitman Hanson budget presentation to February 6th, which makes sense. And then if you look on your February 6th, you have animal control and Whitman Hanson cable access. And we have absolutely nothing on January 23rd. So move those two to January 23rd and we have that entire meeting for the district budget presentation. You see how that could go? Yes. And then, um, so take off the December, take Women Hanson budget presentation off December 12th. Just leave the appeals board. That'll be good. We have one meeting that we have a very limited amount of budget presentations. We can talk a little bit more about the general Article 2 uh, and ha maybe have a shorter meeting on December 12th. Mm -hmm. So that still leaves DPW for the 19th. We're off for the holiday week of the 26th. And then January 2nd, we still have South Shore Votech, Board of Health. They'll be notified this weekend. January 9th, we'll have Recreation Library and Facilities Manager. January 16th, COA, Technology and the Accountant. And then, like I said, if we revise that, February 6th would have Animal Control and the Cable Access on January 23rd. So, 
those are the only changes that I'm proposing, and it's good that we're making these changes before these departments have been notified. It only adds to confusion if you do this after they've been notified, which, which is why I really like the idea of not notifying departments 30 days or more, uh, more than 30 days in advance, because our schedule may change based on someone's cancellation, right? So can you make those changes and then send that out to the... Excellent. All right, any other questions on the schedule? So, like I said, this weekend I'll be sending uh, an information out to uh, Social Votech and the Board of Health uh, to advise them because it'll be the first week of January, their meeting is, and it'll be the first week of December. So, okay, meeting schedule. Oh, Committee? Keep, sorry, but March 5th, we also have Britton Hanson. Are we going to meet with them twice? Um, on a document I have, we have Whitman Hansen on the I, uh, 5th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, March 5th. So we could take that off for now. Yep. I thought we usually meet with them twice, right, once right before their budget. But usually it's with jointly with the selectmen, yeah, you know. So That's our largest budget. We should be on that to see. And that should be in early. The timing of this will work, in my opinion, because the governor's budget will be out the last week of January. Mm -hmm. And meeting with Jeff and whoever else he brings on February 6th, he'll have all of his numbers updated. So the, I thought last year's was a total waste of time, of everybody's time. I don't mean me, but, like, they went through the motions of here's a budget, but we have no real numbers here. So, right, and yeah. It, they were harangued by a few people who no longer serve in public office. Yeah. Um, and it was just, why were we there? We, yep. I sat at the table with John and... Al, yep. and so th there were a lot of us there, but we got nothing out of that meeting. It, it's only when he has real numbers that it's worth starting to grill him. So just February sixth will work out good. February sixth is a good time to meet with him. I want to not let anyone off the hook here. <laughs> he should have real preliminary numbers without the state budget. I agree. So almost allowing for that excuse because you can you you have a sense of your numbers you have a sense of your you know your enrollment you know i will be going to the budget meetings that are scheduled for de uh, december two meetings in december and then one in january and then he'll finalize the numbers at the end of january but okay good. i will be there we'll know. be getting updates all along the way yeah, oh, I, yes, I will yeah, have I, the budget I, meetings that thank are thank you yeah. yeah thank you and just to your point uh, as we know tom picky from south shore votech he's he's always happy to come in a little early and he's got some he usually has some pretty firm numbers even though he doesn't have the exact numbers because yes. he came in last year before before oh, the oh, governor's budget well, was out. Because Abington has an early town meeting so he has to have that budget finalized for his Whitman and Hanson meet in May. So, yeah. so, so he's got a better handle he, on things. He has to have a better, he knows he has yeah. to have a better When he comes in is he going to have some more information about the building and, and how that debt's going to be divided up? There's some sort of is it December, December 14th, 14th eight, oh, yes. at 7, seven. seven, seven o'clock yes. at Town Hall. You know. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, December 14th, you'll get some more information that's about a, that. That's not a thing called meeting. It's no, it's a, no Thursday. it's a Thursday. Should we make that a finance committee meeting as well? We, can, so we, we should probably be there for We've got plenty of time to, to post to that one. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's it for the schedule. Um, old business, so capital committee? We haven't met since... My last report. Okay. I'm annoyed that I don't have the list of capital items. I saw the police chief's request for the first time tonight, but Don's busy. Okay. And the regional agreement amendment committee did meet. We met, and we are going to focus on transportation. So uh, Laura Kemet was unpleasantly surprised to learn that there are more Hanson kids riding the bus than Whitman. She thought that they were going to get some money back. I said, no. <laughs> you know, even though we have more kids, you have a bigger town, and more of your kids are entitled to a bus, and you should be paying for it, not us. Good. So, Good start. Yeah. All right, and that's really the only agenda item that was talked about in that. Yeah, that's really. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And as I mentioned last meeting, the Public Works Department Building Committee has not met, but we'll be meeting in the first or second week of December. So we'll get some more information for you. Did you get the um, information on the home petition? No, I don't. I don't have any more information about it. Um, Whitman Hanson audit, um, the, that's one outstanding item. So all the um, follow-up items that I was charged with to bring to the town administrator last Tuesday, 
I brought to the assistant town administrator on Wednesday because the town administrator was on vacation. So I did give her the list of things that we wanted. We have almost all of them, but that one is still outstanding. We don't have the uh, guidelines for what the audit is going to cover. So that's we'll have that this week. I put it down for follow-up for this week. And communications, we have none. And the meeting schedule is there. Does anybody have anything they'd like to bring up on a new business? Well, just quickly on the last one. You said you have all of the documents that we asked for except for one, but you don't have the home rule petition. Is uh, Did you ask for the home rule petition? I, I, I don't even know if it's called a home rule petition. Rosemary. I won't know until I meet with the committee. But we could get some information from the town administrator. Um, that wasn't on my follow-up right. list. All right. It is now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and if it is a home rule petition, home rule petition is we're going to change the law. And since... We're changing the law to access money. I think that should be reviewed. That's you tell me what you're talking about. A home rule petition. No, so no, let's no. let's let's take oh. the home rule petition out of the equation. What I mentioned last week was that there's a delay in the building committee moving forward with a contract mm -hmm. because the way the money was allocated yes. at the town meeting, no, there has to be some legislative process in order to. Yeah, free up the money. That's a whole petition. It Either might way. be a whole rule petition, but I don't know. So we'll get money from one project and putting it to a different project. Right. So so and charging ratepayers instead of taxpayers. That's so then consistent. there has to be a there has to be a home rule petition to do that. Home rule petitions are placed when you're when you're you're changing the law, essentially. So I want to read why it has to be a home rule petition, so we can review if that is. How that affects things long term. That's all. Um, yeah, that's okay. Great. So follow up item for me. Okay. All right, you should be getting it by email. I appreciate that. All right, any other thing that anyone would like to bring up? Rosemary. Um, before this meeting, I was in the zoning meeting downstairs. That the original zoning proposals put forward were a little concerning. They had things without outside of the walking distance of the MBTA or within a reasonable walking distance of the MBTA, they had, the, you know, it, it looked as if we would run into some problems, possibly run into problems um, meeting the guidelines or the intent of the law. Um, the meeting before this seemed to be a lot of the people on the planning board had pulled it and reined it back in, used a lot of in the... We zoned over a lot of industrial space around the T that we don't regularly use, so people and the public would be more open to it. So um, it is looking much better than it did before. Much better. Excellent. All right. Well, if that is all the new and old business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. All in favor? Yes. Thank you very much.